Welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This is our weekly Q&A session. You ask the questions and hopefully we give you something resembling an answer. Uh, if you've got any questions, get them in in the comments underneath. There's also an email address on the bottom of the screen right there you can send them into. And don't forget, when you subscribe, if you click the little notification bell, that means every time we post a video, it goes live. You get a little notification pop up on your phone to tell you that there's a new video. Um, right, cool. Let's get involved with the first question. Yeah, let's go straight into it. First, we have a question from Kit Nicholson. And he says, I've recently bought a Marin San Quentin one and a friend gave me a SRAM GX group set. That sounds pretty good. How would I get an XT driver onto the current hub without replacing the wheel? And where do I get one also on a tight budget? Ah, right now this, this could be a little bit tricky for you. So on Marin bikes or Marin bikes, um, they're OEM spec hubs. That means the hubs that they come with that are spec for original manufacturing. Um, they're actually manufactured by a company called Joytech. Now Joytech and Novatech are the same brand. Right, they yes. make hubs for a whole bunch of different people out there. You'll see them on many people's bikes. And the particular hub on yours is a D142 DSC stroke B5. Oh, wow. um, in case you always wanted to yeah. know that. Um, <laughs> now I have scoured around on Novatech and Joytech websites and I can't find any compatibility um, suggestions to say you can do that unfortunately with that particular hub. Um, I have however asked the guys that are in, in the USA, um, I'm just waiting for them to just double, double check so I will come back to you on this so feel free to prod me again. But in the meantime, if you want to go for 12 speed on the same bike and make the most of that SRAM GX setup that your friend kindly gave you, um, maybe the best option is to look at a regular 12 speed cassette, something like the uh, Sunline or Sunrace, in fact, 12 speed cassette that mounts using the regular yeah. Shimano fitting. So if you get that cassette, you can use all that SRAM niceness with it and it'll make your bike a 12 speed little monster. Perfect, so all hope is not lost, although maybe a bit of a spanner in the works. Yeah. Um, but, but stand forward on that because you may get some sort of chance to fit an XD driver on there, but I personally, I'd just go for the Sun Race and get on with it because you've already got that good stuff and yep. sat around. Okay, next up is from Razif. Says, I've got a pair of SRAM guide our brakes and I seriously need to bleed them. Now there's a few mountain bike shops around my place, but I'm struggling to find dot 5.1 fluid. It is stated that we can use dot 4 or 5.1, but what would the pros and cons be between the two? Yeah, so they are cross compatible. Um, the danger being if you use a fluid that isn't compatible with your brakes, it'll basically not do very nice things to the internals. Mm. The dot four and the dot 5.1 can replace one another like for like. However, the dot 5.1 does have quite a significantly higher boiling point. So you will probably get more consistency, especially under heat. That's yeah. what I'd say. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Um, one other little thing with dot fluid over mineral fluid is once you've opened a packet of dot fluid, you really want to use the amount that's in there as quickly as possible because over time, sat on your workshop, it can ingest water into that fluid. Um, so you're better off rather than getting an industrial tub of the stuff, um, get a smaller one, just enough to do your brakes yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. I think it's probably save you money in the long run because you end up having to get rid of it, which is not ideal. Yeah, totally. And similar if we make the comparison to mineral fluid. It sounds really silly, but if you can avoid shaking or moving the dot fluid bottle before, and similarly don't you know suck a bit of air because it does, it does mix quite a lot with the air. Yeah, yeah. And you can you know you can purge it and let the air settle, but it will get you a tighter bleed quicker if you just are quite careful to only draw oil into the syringe. Mm, so leave it be. Yeah. yeah, basically. Next we have a question from Neil Hayes, and he says, "Is there a way?" to repair a set of san uh, sanctions, sanctions if they were to wear? Or is it a replacement set of forks? I have an old set of forks and can't get anything similar as I'm already using a set of RockShox Lyric U-turn forks and I haven't found anything like it in a newer fork. Um, I guess it's all down to how worn out they are really. Mm. You get all sorts of different damage that can occur on the stanchion tubes. Um, if it's basics sort of polishing just from extended use over time and they're nice and smooth, uh, then chances are you can still use them. But if there's any sort of divots in them, big chunks taken out of them, or even corrosion, which I have seen on, God knows how it gets there, on, on some people's <laughs> yeah, forks, it as well, yeah. um, when it almost get lumpy, you're yeah. gonna damage the bushes on the inside, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Uh, the more common thing you tend to see is scratches yeah. on stanchions. And the thing that makes them bad is you get like little burrs that pop up and they'll damage the fork seals and it can also damage the bushes on the inside. So you can make a temporary fix on those by using a metal file, delicately file down the burr so it doesn't sort of protrude anymore. Use some metal polish on there as well to make it a nice smooth finish. 
um, and at least that'll pass by your seals. Now you can also use something like a hard nail lacquer, like a nail varnish, oh, yeah. to sort of rebuild that layer as yes, well and polish yeah. it down. Um, it's a, it's a bit of a hack, it's not really a fix to be honest, the only real fix is a new set of uh, upper legs which is a crown steerer upper and they're quite expensive but you can keep them going. Yeah and I would say as well if you go for, if you have worn your uppers which have in turn worn your lowers mm. and you only replace the uppers because that's what you can see, if Good your point. bushing is loose in there it's just gonna be money down the bin. Yeah, for sure. So maybe before you commit to anything, either do it yourself or take it to your local bike shop and you want to be inspecting it was just with a flashlight or just hold it under a light and you'll probably be able to see some um, some damage if there is any on the bushing. Yeah, fingers crossed if your forks have been even vaguely maintained over the years, you might, yeah. might well be all right. <laughs> but we have seen some pretty yeah, horrific ones things, in the yeah. past. In fact, I'll try and get, um, we'll try and visit some of our suspension tuning friends and get some images of some really bad examples of what not to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I saw yeah. Jacob Sprung put some up on their Instagram and I can't believe that these are off a usable bike. Yeah. So how, how do people get to it, this stage? It's like you said when it goes to like braille on the leg. <laughs> yes. It's just like, you know. And it says, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, next up's from James Harmer. Uh, been looking for a new bike for a while, somewhere in the two grand to two and a half grand price bracket. I've narrowed it down to a few options, including a Vitesse Escarpe mm -hmm. and a Canyon Spectral. I'm concerned about passing with my money when cracked frames seem to be such a common problem. Are manufacturers sacrificing strength to make the frames lighter or has this always been an issue affecting some riders? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head there by saying some riders. Yeah. I know people who habitually break bikes. Yep. Um, and I think it's a, a combination of a couple of things. One, I think that sort of trail bike, that 140 mil trail bike, means many different things to many different people. Oh yeah, the age old problem. Yeah, I would yeah. treat it as something that's a burly cross country bike. Yep. Super fun to ride, trail center blast in, you know, natural trails perfect. Some people will be like, oh my God, this is just a lightweight downhill bike. Uh, I can put... That's where the problems come. That's where the problem is because yeah. they're very capable, even though sometimes they can be quite light. Yeah. The other thing you touched on is, are they sacrificing strengths to make their frames lighter? Well, inherently, yes they could make all bikes indestructible. It just depends whether Wouldn't you want, want to ride them. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, you, you you kind of answered yourself there. That, But that's all the reason to buy one new, because if it does crack, you've you got, have a, good got warranty. a warranty. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but don't be one of those people that says you were just riding along yeah. and it broke because every mechanic in every bike shop around the world has heard that story a million times, yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they'll know you definitely weren't riding along if your nice little 130, 140 mil travel bike snaps at the chain stage, because yeah. that's quite unlikely for yeah. normal riding. Yeah, my friend used to get it. He went through, this was about five years ago, and he went through three rear ends in a year. Well, sorry, in a season even, so that's it. Just months. riding along? Just riding along, slash taking his trail bike, 140 mil travel to New Zealand, putting some dual ply tires on it, 170 mil fork, well, New Zealand kind of says a lot, yeah, doesn't it? Just, oh, makes my blood boil. <laughs> Do you know, there's, um, there's a creator that works here, one of the cameramen that's um, behind making these videos. Now, he's got a bit of a wonky foot and he's been known to wear through chainstays, actually. Um, his name's oh, Jack, yes. by the way. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Kind of like Ben Deakin's got a bit of a wonky foot and he sort of wears mm. the paint off a chainstay. Um, if that's you, by the way, if you ride like that and you do do that to your own bikes, do be careful because you can actually damage the yeah. frames in the yeah. long term. Um, I joke about it but it's actually pretty bad because it's quite abrasive, your foot constantly rubbing. If that's the case, when you do get a new bike, cover up your chain stays with some heli tape. Wear that out instead of your actual <laughs> chain stays. Like, it's not hard, just yeah. look after your bikes. And do you know that's where Q Factor comes from? Do you know what that means? Um, I've heard a rumor about this. I'm not sure if I believe. Quack Factor. Yeah, I thought that. Maybe, I heard it. It's I'm, bizarre. I think it would make sense, yeah. but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, next question is from Will Torres, and he says, so I've always noticed that on the back side of the seat tube, there is a cutout so the tube can clamp down on the seat post. I've got, um, ah, I like the little slot yeah, yeah, so for the quick release, yeah, yeah. You kind of, I think the wording's a bit confusing here, but he's talking about the gunk that gets into the cutout and when you have to move your seat post, it does tend to grind a bit. Mm -hmm. If you take a small amount of clear 3M tape, you can put it over that area. It looks like it's not even there and yet prevents mud, mud and dirt. Mert. 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 That's good, I like that. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Getting into that cutout. 
Yeah. So it's not it's not so much a question, just That's a good little hack. Bloody good suggestion. Um, <laughs> you know, some frame manufacturers have cottoned on to that and they actually put that same slot around the front of the tube so it's protected from that yeah. mud spray, the exact stuff you're talking about. Um, but just because you've got a little sticker over it, which is a great idea, don't think that your frame is impervious to this sort of stuff because all bikes will let in mud and dirt and stuff into the frame. So from time to time, you should take your seat post out, turn your bike upside down, and hopefully you won't have any gunk in there. And another thing you should do from time to time is take your bottom bracket out, because mm. uh, a lot of that gunk will end up in your bottom bracket shell. Um, if you've got a steel frame in particular, you wanna oh, make sure yes. you spray in some sort of water displacer. Uh, something like WD-40 is ideal, because it's also a corrosion inhibitor. Um, so if there is gonna be any water in your frame and moisture, you wanna stop it turning into surface rust, which you can ultimately rot your frame. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a good good thing of practice, really, sort of annually, I think, to take out your BB for inspection. Yeah. Um, you'll probably need to change it anyway, yeah. um, depending how often you ride, and use that opportunity to sort of just make sure your frame is good and clean on yeah. the inside. But yeah, that's a nice little hack, that. Yeah, there are a number as well, those kind of companies coming with better solutions to the seat clamp. Yeah. White, for instance, I'd say. Yeah, the White have got really almost nice. got built in sort of a yeah. grommet, I guess. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, good yeah nice, nice system, and it is good that people are paying attention to that. But yeah, thanks for your hack. That's cool. Uh, next up is from Tanik uh, Leahy. I'm planning on getting a Canyon Sender, but I'd also like to take it on the trails as well. I know it has a disadvantage when it comes to gears compared to a dedicated trail bike, but I'd like to know if it's possible to put a 11 speaker set and derailleur on a downhill bike like the Sender. Yeah, so Tadig, my old mucker, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you straight. It's a just just don't do it. Because the problem is you will one, the spacing will be even if you get a different hub and so you can fit a 12 speed or whatever. The whole BB's pretty wide anyway, isn't it? Yeah. The chain line is optimized for downhill chain line, yep. so the gears tend to be set in different places. But let's say you get around that, even then you're gonna have something that's really slack, really horrible. You probably cut we struggle to get a seat post long enough, you know. I've seen people before going around with two seat posts. Yeah. The descending one. To get there. Oh. Because if you go with a long one, yeah. you can't get it down enough in the thing to descend. Yeah, especially with the little seat masts on a lot of downhill bikes, yeah. yeah. I know it's very tempting because yeah. I think downhill bikes are so light now. We were talking about how my downhill bike is lighter than some of my, <laughs> like my yeah. trail bikes. I know, it is crazy actually, but you've definitely got to last to the bottom of the hill, haven't they? Trail yeah. bikes, I think, advanced trail bikes are quite a lot more stick, I think, yeah. these days. But if you look at, if we stick to Canyon, I'd say if you look at the torque, yep. it will be remarkably similar in terms That's of what a great you shout out actually, on the performance, yeah. but it won't be, like I, I'm I'm quite happy to pedal around a big bike, mm -hmm. but I would draw the line at a downhill bike and just be like. Well, yeah, I mean, so, something else you were just saying about the angles, um, in case you haven't figured this out, on downhill bikes especially, most of the seat angles are incredibly slack. Mm. So if you've got the saddle on, by the time it's actually at the height to pedal, you'll be nearly over the rear wheel axle. <laughs> yeah, so you'll yeah. find it hard not to do wheelies. Yeah. Um, but also, actually, I'm pretty sure, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but but let's just say it's five years ago, Peter Marisburg, a lot of the top pros started running dropper posts on their downhill bikes for some of the piddly sections. Yes. Well, that I'm was like grass year when he was still racing. Third. Graves was doing, yeah, there's quite a few that tried it out, but um, that's since died of death. Yeah. So it can't have been that successful for them. I, th I think the issue was as well was that if you had a two way dropper that was on a button, but it's, you had to wait the seat to get it down before yeah. the section. Yeah. And actually, what you want, if you could press a you button. You want to go down maybe, by itself, yeah. I think, for yeah. those guys, yeah. So maybe yeah. with electric seat posts, who knows? So that's it from us this week. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you click on that little bell, as Doddy mentioned, bing, bing. then you're always sure to be getting the latest and hopefully greatest from GMBN Tech. Now I'm gonna throw to a, a video that you did out in Alpe d'Huez, a 10 minute suspension setup. Oh yeah, a long way to make that video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's a good, it's a good place to go to though. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> hopefully you'll find it pretty helpful. Uh, and I'm gonna throw you something equally as helpful, um, Henry's brake hacks down here. Oh, yeah. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff in that, so get involved with that. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up.